Hey y'all, Knox here with the American Suppressor Association, and welcome to the April 2023 Suppressor Policy Update. If you thought March was busy, buckle up, because April had even more activity. On April 25th, ASA General Counsel Mike Williams and I attended the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation Congressional Clays Competition at the PG County Trap and Skeet Range in Glendale, Maryland. This year, the event brought around 20 bipartisan members of Congress together for a day of competitive sporting clay, trap, and skeet shooting. I don't want to tell you what our final score was because it wasn't great, but Michael and I had a fantastic time shooting, suppressed of course, on a team with Representative Tim Wahlberg of Michigan's 5th District. Also in attendance was Representative Jeff Duncan, lead sponsor of the Hearing Protection Act. The CSF Clays competition is always a great time and one that we are proud to be a part of. On the state side, the Colorado Assault Weapons Ban has been tabled indefinitely, meaning, for all intents and purposes, that bill is dead. ASA Vice President Owen Miller testified in opposition to the bill, noting during his testimony that any restriction on threaded barrels is a direct infringement on law-abiding citizens' ability to use a suppressor. Nearly 600 ASA members in Colorado contacted their legislators to voice their opposition. We were a small part of a larger coalition that helped stop House Bill 23-1230 in its tracks, but we should all be proud to say that we helped. In politics, every voice matters. In Rhode Island, the Senate Judiciary Committee hosted a hearing on April 25th that included three pro-suppressor bills, S-348, S-383, and S-394. All three bills, which are supported by Senators Rogers, DeLuca, Paulino, and Minority Leader Dela Cruz, were heard and immediately held for further study. It's unlikely that there will be any movement on these bills this session, but we will keep you updated if there is any movement. In Washington State, things are more bleak. Also on April 25th, Governor Jay Inslee signed House Bill 1240 into law, making Washington one of the most restrictive states when it comes to guns. Thankfully, the new law, which is undeniably unconstitutional, does not outright ban suppressors. However, it does ban threaded barrels and suppressors on almost any semi-automatic rifle or pistol. We are working with our industry and Second Amendment partner organizations to ensure this massive overstep is properly challenged in court and will provide updates as things progress. Last, or more accurately first, on April 5th, Judge Stephen McGlynn issued an order staying Anderson v. Raul for 90 days. His order says that he issued the stay so that he could focus on four consolidated cases before him that challenge Illinois' assault weapons bans. This means that the ASA Foundation and Silencer Shop case, which is challenging the ban on suppressors in Illinois, is on pause until July at the earliest. This development is potentially advantageous as a favorable ruling in the assault weapons ban cases could be helpful for our challenge. Well, that's it for our April policy update. Be sure to tune in next month and we'll see you then. As a nonprofit, our job is to fight for your rights and we could not do it without your support. Your membership and your donations fund our fights in Washington, D.C. and in state capitals across the country. I promise that the American Suppressor Association will not stop fighting until suppressors are removed from the National Firearms Act and are legal to own in all 50 states. Help us protect your right to protect your hearing by making sure your membership in the American Suppressor Association is active. Visit us at asamember.com to join or renew today. That's asamember.com.